Hello, I'm the Nostalgia Critic. I remember it so you don't have to. You know, what is it about sports movies? They're rarely good, and yet we always seem to enjoy watching them. Why? It's like watching a taped recording of a baseball game. We all know what's going to happen in the end, so why do we waste our time watching it? This question has been plaguing me for the last five minutes, and I can't take it anymore. I have to discover the secret behind the nostalgic sports movies. In the late 80s, and especially the early 90s, we get a huge flood of children's sports movies. You could say the start of it all was the Bad News Bears. At least that's where the formula started. You know, the formula about the underdog team of misfits who don't look like they have a chance and then somehow turn into the greatest team of all time within one season. It may have started with the Bad News Bears, but it was the Mighty Ducks that got the attention of our generation. It was about a lawyer who had to spend his community service time teaching peewee hockey to a bunch of rowdy kids. And as you might have guessed, hijinks ensued. Of course, in a matter of no time at all, the team makes it to the championship because they start playing with heart. It wasn't a good movie, but it wasn't really a bad movie either. It was just kind of a generic sports film. But for some reason, we all saw it, which meant not one, but two sequels actually came out of this, with the exact same storyline. But wait a minute, how can the exact same team that won the championship suddenly need to be trained again? Haven't you guys been training in the offseason? You know, I knew we forgot something. That's really lame. So this film spawned dozens of Mighty Duck ripoffs, including Little Giants, Little Big League, Little Angels in the Outfield. Well, okay, maybe they weren't all little, but you get the point. Everybody loved this formula and abused it to death. And if there's anything these films have taught us, it's that there's a very specific type of team you need in order to beat the championships. For example, you always need the fat kid. The kid who does nothing but apparently eat food and talk about how much he likes eating food. After that, you need the geeky kid. The kid who always overanalyzes everything and has to wear glasses so that you automatically know that he's the geeky kid. Which I highly resent, by the way. And then, of course, you need the girl. The only single, solitary female who shows that girls can do anything that boys can. Except move a couch or pee standing up. We own that. And last but not least, you need the good-looking all-star. The character who's troubled, confused, and could be the best player on the team if only somebody would give him a chance. You're up here, man. Me? But I'm just an emotionally troubled rookie. What could I have to offer? You got an angel with you right now. What? Oh, yeah. Apparently there's angels out there that help players win by cheating at baseball games. At least that's what they tell us in Angels in the Outfield. A film that stars an actor that you might find to be a little familiar. Tommy! 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 That's right, Tommy from Third Rock from the Sun stars in this stinker, as he tries to ask his father when there'll be a family again. I'd say when the angels win the pennant. In a last desperate attempt, Tommy actually turns to God and asks him for help. God, I really like a family. Maybe you could help him win a little. <laughs> Faster than you can say religious blasphemy, Tommy is visited by angels who actually help out the team to get them to the pennant. Now what sense does that make? Are you seriously telling me God is up in heaven somewhere saying, A nasty earthquake kills billions? Sorry, not really my department. Oh, thousands of children starving in Africa? Sorry, I do work in mysterious ways. <laughs> a little boy wants me to rig a baseball game so he can be reunited with his selfish jackass father? Angels to your duty! You, stop that curveball! You, help his pitching! You, give him a back rub! You, get that creepy angel that looks like Christopher Lloyd to do some pointless flashy special effects! My god, I've never seen a cause more worthy! But not all sports movies necessarily have to follow a team. Like how about the Karate Kid? You remember, the kid that actually learns karate by painting fences and waxing cars? Yeah, I know this sounds like complete bullshit, but I believe in this method. So much so, that I have been training for weeks, painting my fences and waxing my cars to become the ultimate karate master! And now, I think it's time to put my newly founded teachings to the test. This is my opponent, and now I will demonstrate the brute fighting force that I have become. Okay, so maybe the idea is a little far-fetched, but not as far-fetched as some of the other underdog stories, where the star of the movie is literally an underdog. 
Like in Airbud. Yeah, you remember this piece of shit, right? The movie about a dog who is actually allowed to play basketball? In what universe is this? I'm checking your rule book. He's right! Ain't no rule said the dog can't play basketball! Oh, of course! It doesn't say in the rule book that I can't bring a dog in to play basketball. What was I thinking? And you wanna know what else? I'm pretty sure that doesn't say anywhere that I can't bring roller skating black bears in either. Or how about professionally trained tap dancing orangutan? Or how about a giant urinating elephant with one testicle who can sing the classical works of Andrew Lloyd Webber? Is that in the rule book? Is it? Is it? It is? Holy shit, how amazingly specific. This is a joke! Another film just dealing with one player is Rookie of the Year. In this film, a kid injures his arm so that it can propel back and launch like a catapult. So a baseball team actually decides to pick him up as a pitcher. Seriously, what baseball team could be so desperate that they actually get a child to pitch for them? You sure this isn't a true story? Gotcha. Another reoccurring theme you might have noticed in these movies is the villain. Somehow, the other team is always made up of the most evil, diabolically sneaky bunch of people you've ever seen in your life. Like, remember the martial arts teacher from The Karate Kid? This guy makes General Mao look like a princess. Mercy is for the weak. What are you here for, old man? The enemy deserves no mercy. What are you looking at? Finish him! What karate teacher actually talks like this? This is a karate dojo, not a knitting class. Well, I expected this kind of treatment from the YMCA, but not from this establishment! My favorite scene is when Mr. Miyagi asks the teacher to leave Daniel alone before the tournament. You're a pushy little bastard, ain't you? But I like that. I like that. Yes, yes, very clever, old man. The ball is in your court now, but after the tournament is over, it is I who will possess the golden trophy, making me ruler of the dojo set next to the Walgreens drugstores. <laughs> God, I need a girlfriend. Or how about the kids from Little Giants? Remember how intimidating they were? We just came by to tell you guys how incredibly sorry we are that you didn't make the team. Oh, well, uh, thank you very much. You know, maybe I had you guys pegged wrong. I always assumed you were harsh, mean individuals, but now I see you're just the playful type who don't really want to hurt anybody's feelings. Not! Not! Damn your witty repartee! You know there's no way I can talk my way out of the knot claws! It's foolproof! But I think my favorite villains have to go to the Germans from Cool Runnings. I don't know why, but I just love these guys. They're like the grade school bullies of bobsledding. Why don't you put some training views on that sled? <laughs> you wanna say something, Jamaica? Come on, Jamaica. You have no business here, Jamaica. Pia, and your father was a Wiener Schnitzel. Seriously, these guys are like the Nelsons of Winter Olympics. <laughs> And of course, you can't have a kid's sports movie without the always popular sports montage. This is where you see the team working really hard in a couple of clips and then suddenly they become professional players. Newsflash guys, fast editing and a horrible 80s song doesn't make you sports legends. In fact, you can do anything with an 80s song and fast editing and you'll look like a hero. Watch! You see? But to be honest, not all children's sports movies are god-awful. I mean, Cool Runnings isn't all that bad. And The Sandlot, in my opinion, is an all-American classic. But these films are few and far between, as most of these movies just succumb to the same idiotic cliches that make us all want to get hit in the head with a curveball. So why do we watch them so much? Because we love sports, and we always love the underdog. So much so that these films actually continue to follow us. Now, instead of making cheesy sports films for kids, they're making cheesy sports films for adults. And again, the good ones are few and far between. But I guess it's important to remember that it's not how good or bad the movie is, it's how you play the game. And of course, no children's sports movie will be complete without the greatest cliché of all. And so, to this cliché, I say... To Lucas. To Cool Runnings. To Rudy. Congratulations! You did it! You perfected the slow clap! <laughs> I'm the new
nostalgia critic. I remember it so you don't have to. Oh my!